everybody, Dave Lerner, Venture Studio. We're here at the stunning headquarters of Tasting Table with its CEO, Jeff Bartikovics. Jeff, thanks for having us, appreciate it. My pleasure. Tell us a little about Tasting Table. Tasting Table is a daily email for adventurous eaters and drinkers. Uh, we send an email every day right before lunch to uh, over a million subscriptions at this point about the best restaurants, wine shops, cocktails, uh, food travel, and anything that an adventurous eater would be interested in. Okay, you have a million subscribers. How many cities are you guys in? Uh, we're in five cities, New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Chicago, and Washington, D.C. Uh, and then we also have a national edition for folks who aren't in those cities, but who are interested in food and drink content. Now, is that where this wonderful facility comes in? What do you do here in this beautiful place? This is the test kitchen and dining room, which we just launched in June of this year. We create a lot of content behind us. Uh, we do a lot of recipe testing and development. Uh, and we have quite a few dinner parties and cocktail parties here to bring the tasting table brands to life for our members. So when you have these dinner parties and these cocktails, who's coming? What kind of people? In a lot of instances, we're inviting in the types of folks that we're writing about because we want them to experience Tasting Table and we want to thank them for working with us on whatever article it is that we created. For other events, it could be a cocktail party for one of our sponsors who wants to introduce their new spirit to the right people. Uh, we invite in guests. We'll have some mixologists come in and create some custom Tasting Table cocktails using that. And then we'll just bring folks in so that they experience it in this beautiful environment, as you said. Okay, so you mentioned you have about a million members. You know, how do you segment th that, that population? Our membership joins at tastingtable.com by simply entering their email address and their zip code. Uh, we do some quick, you know, less than a second math and figure out whether or not there's a local tasting table edition within 20, 30 miles uh, of that zip code. And if there is, that is the uh, edition that we'll put the member into. And if not, then we'll put them into our national edition. Over the course of time, a portion of those folks uh, love it enough that they'll go and they'll go to manage my subscription, they'll add an additional subscription. Uh, so our million uh, members uh, it actually is about 750,000 individuals. So what was the genesis for Tasting Table? I left banking in 2008 to start something up, wasn't quite sure what. I was very interested in the daily email model. So I launched uh, Tasting Table along with my business partner, John McDonald, who's pretty uh, big restaurant tour here in New York, uh, and we launched in October of 08. Okay, it sounds simple, but there are a lot of players in this space, Yelp, many others. How do you distinguish yourself? We are the exact opposite of a Yelp or a Chowhound. We're not about quantity, we're about a quality recommendation. So you're a busy guy, you don't have time to go through the Yelp boards or the Chowhound boards. Uh, we come to you in your inbox with a very specific 150 word place to eat, place to drink, whatever it is, and you can trust that recommendation because we've gone out and we've tested it for you. So why should we trust you guys? Who's tasting this food? Well, you're not trusting me. I'm just the Excel monkey here, but we do have an editorial team that has a deep experience uh, in food journalism, uh, all of whom are full-time editors who uh, eat and drink high and low in order to find the places that we recommend. Tell us a little about some of the tough times you experienced doing this. I had full faith that this was going to work. Uh, that just coincided a little bit or that clashed a little bit with the realities of cash flow management on a day-to-day -day basis around the end of our first year. So although we were backed, we had a specific amount of money. Uh, we were bringing in cash uh, from our advertising operations. We were growing really quickly and all of a sudden you look at the QuickBooks and you say, ah, we need a little bit more money here for uh, working capital. Like many entrepreneurs who are watching this show, you're running out of money, what do you do? So you start asking around, uh, and I actually contacted uh, Ben Lear, who is in the uh, pilot portfolio as well, uh, who introduced me to the guys at Square One, uh, which is a bank that focuses on uh, venture funding. And we got together and took a look at the, the uh, business plan, and uh, they liked what they saw, and they gave us a line of credit, which solved the problem pretty quickly. What else happened? Raising money is always a challenge, but actually managing the money on a day-to-day -day basis is a never-ending challenge. Uh, my favorite example, or my least favorite example, uh, is that I had a string of bookkeepers who were not as uh, enterprise quality as I was used to coming from banking. So I was in between two bookkeepers at some point and I literally was asleep and at 4.30 in the morning realized uh, subconsciously clearly that I had not run the payroll. And I bolted up in bed and looked at my watch and I think I had till 5 a.m. to process that payroll. And I ran practically in my boxer shorts from my apartment to the office, which is admittedly only a few blocks, to get that thing in there because at the end of the day, if you don't pay your employees on time, probably aren't gonna have too much faith that the business is going very well. You've scaled from 
you know, maybe 15 people to 30, 40 people in the last year. That's right. How, how have you uh, addressed that challenge? I don't know if it's exactly been a challenge uh, from a management perspective uh, because we set up the infrastructure for the business pretty solidly from the beginning. The challenge comes around how you instill that same startup drive in folks who are being hired as employee number 30 as you did for employee number three. Uh, which has uh, you know, led to some creative uh, ideas about how to uh, bring people onto the organization. Tell us about some of those ideas. I'm sure people want to know. Classic, corny things like doing um, a new joiner luncheon with myself and the directors where we come into the test kitchen, uh, we give them a taste of the types of food that we think embodies what tasting table is, uh, while I tell them stories, war stories much like we're discussing today, about what it took to get to this moment and remind them what the core principles and values of Tasting Table are. Uh, so that when they're out there uh, talking about what Tasting Table is to an advertiser or a partner or a publicist, they're hitting the right messages and conveying the right ethos uh, that you know, we've spent the last three years building. Tying this all together, you know, you have a very fascinating background. You're a Fulbright scholar. You've lived abroad. Uh, you worked in the banking. At one point, did you sort of make the transition to being an entrepreneur psychologically? I think you never fully make the jump because every time you feel like you've got things under control, uh, you get that little spark that says, let's shake things up because this is getting a little bit too calm for my, for my taste. Especially since the tasting table business model is, uh, it's proven, it's, it's a classic advertising model. We're constantly looking for ways that we can do this better, make it more interesting, take on the competition. Are you guys hiring? We're always hiring. Uh, you can go out to tastingtable.com forward slash jobs and you can see what we've got out there. There's always something. Jeff, I want to thank you for hosting us here. This has been great. It's great to meet you. Best of luck. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Venture Studio in association with Mashable is brought to you by Square One Bank.